One of my all-time favorite television dramas is a brilliant but short-lived show from 1995-96 era that sadly few people have ever heard of or even watched. It was called Nowhere Man and it starred Bruce Greenwood. Let me tell you about it, hopefully without giving too much away, because if you like conspiracy-style mysteries and you've never watched it, this is as close to must-see TV as it gets. Greenwood's character is Thomas Vale, a photojournalist who mostly worked as a war photographer. In the pilot episode, he's having his first ever exhibition at his art gallery, but he hates the attention and all the schmoozing. Now, many of his photos are raw and disturbing, but the centerpiece of the exhibit is a photo he titled Hidden Agenda. It's a grisly photo of military personnel apparently presiding over a gallows-style execution of four men in an as-yet-unnamed third-world country. Now, After convincing his wife that he's ready to leave, they go to their favorite restaurant for an elegant dinner. During the meal, Vale gets up to go to the restroom, and after returning, his wife is gone. Another couple is at his table. It feels like some sort of cruel joke, as the methradi doesn't seem to know who Vale is. The Vale quickly grows impatient with the joke. The scene itself escalates, and then eventually security gets involved and physically expels him from the restaurant. So he hails a cab, gets home, and lo and behold, the key to his front door doesn't work. He bangs on the door. His wife comes to the door with another man holding a shotgun. His own dog is beside them growling at him. The couple at the door, Vale's wife and a strange man claiming to be her husband, threaten to either shoot Vale or call the police if he doesn't leave. Bewildered, angry, and heartbroken, he leaves. He stops at the ATM and his card is then eaten by the machine because it's considered fraudulent. In one terrifying moment, it seems that Thomas Vale has been erased. As the pilot continues, we learn that this erasure seems to have no end and almost no detail was missed. No depths have not been exploited. Even friends and family alike claim that they don't know anyone named Thomas Vale. Oh, and one more important element that comes to light in the pilot. There seems to be some all-powerful shadow organization that's responsible for all this. And the first and ongoing play against Vale is to convince him that he's crazy and that Thomas Vale only exists in his own mind. Now that, my friend, is what is called gaslighting. Now these days, the word gaslighting is all the rage. Everyone seems to love using this term, but I doubt very many people even know what it really means. Experts, such as retired professor of business and psychology Dale Hartley, says that gaslighting is a form of master manipulation. In an article for Psychology Today, Hartley points out that the history of the idea can probably be traced back to a 1944 psychological thriller titled Gaslight. The film stars Charles Boyer and Ingrid Bergman as husband and wife. The husband, to cover up his dark secrets, engages in a series of creepy mind games against his own wife, causing her to question what is real and to doubt her own sanity. He moves objects around the house. He tells her she's forgotten things when she hasn't. He convinces her that friends and family are not to be trusted, and he causes the gas lights of the home to flicker while denying that it's actually happening. Hartley says, quote, Gaslighting is a Machiavellian tactic that may include denying certain events took place, distorting the truth, outright lying, blaming the victim for the abusive behavior, minimizing the victim's feelings and experiences, withholding information, negatively stereotyping the victim, and intimidation. The list of possible tactics can go on and on. The purpose of gaslighting is to sow confusion, doubt, and self-distrust so that the manipulator 
can exert control over the victim, end quote. So the real heart of gaslighting is that people who are actually engaged in gaslighting are liars. But it isn't just that they're lying, which far too many people do on a regular basis. It's that they are liars at the very core of their being. And they use their masterful ability to lie as a way of manipulating, controlling, and dominating others. Now, despite the fact that age (laughs) seems to be a dirty topic these days, I don't mind letting you know I'm 55 years old at the recording of this podcast episode. I've lived in six states, eight if you count my experience in the United States Army boot camp and advanced training. And I can honestly say that in my lifetime, I've only experienced actual gaslighting once, and that really wasn't me who was being gaslit. I just happened to be close enough to the situation to be able to observe it happening in real time. It was truly maddening. Of course, some could probably argue that boot camp itself is a common form of gaslighting. It's no doubt a time of extreme stress and manipulation and plenty of untruths, But I disagree that it could be called gaslighting. It wasn't ultimately malicious. Drill sergeants do what they do because they have eight weeks to turn weak recruits like myself into strong men and women who are capable of surviving the horrors of war should it come to that. I and my fellow recruits were the beneficiaries of this extreme training, not victims. Thomas Vail, the nowhere man, and Ingrid Bergman's character, Paula, were true victims of gaslighting, masterfully manipulated by stone-cold liars with evil, malicious intent. As Dr. Hartley said, the purpose of gaslighting is to sow confusion, doubt, and self-distrust so that the manipulator can exert control over the victim. But What the good doctor didn't know is that this has been happening for far longer than he imagined. It started in the Garden of Eden when Satan himself, the most cunning of all creatures, said to Eve, Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? And so the lies and manipulation began. After the baptism of Jesus, the very Son of God, the Father himself spoke from heaven saying, Quote, this is my beloved son, I take great delight in him, end quote. So what does Satan, the master gaslighter, do? He meets Jesus in the wilderness and says, if you are the son of God, and in essence, prove it. Twice he tried this trick, and twice he struck out, because Jesus didn't just know the truth, he was the truth. In fact, later in John eight forty four. Jesus says, quote, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. End quote. Satan is the master gaslighter. He hates you. Let me say that again. Satan hates you. From the very beginning, his goal has been to sow confusion, doubt, and self-distrust so that he can exert complete control over you. And while there certainly are examples of real human gaslighting, statistically speaking, like me, you probably have never been a victim of such a truly evil, malicious ploy. Having people lie to you or about you? Sure, we've all experienced that. Having people try to manipulate us for their own gain? Absolutely. But gaslighting, masterful, malicious lying and manipulation to the extent of trying to make you think you're losing your mind, well, most of us, again, statistically speaking, have never had another human do that to us. Despite how many people like to throw it around on the interwebs as if it were a modern-day badge of honor. But your enemy, the devil has never stopped doing this, and he won't ever stop. He will do everything in his power to make you doubt the sanity of following Christ. Don't let him win. Don't allow yourself to be gaslit. 
Do the same thing Jesus did. Cling to the absolute, immutable, unchanging truth of Scripture. That's the only way to resist Satan's lies. And James 4, 7 says that when you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Now, if you'd like to receive the full transcript of this and every episode for free, you can sign up today at ericwilbanks.com or shoot me an email to eric at ericwilbanks.com and I'll send you the transcript every time I release a new episode. I don't spam and I will certainly never share or sell your email address. Until next time, remember, a better mind always leads to a better life.